Amen. I want to show you these examples in the Bible where people used praise and it won a powerful victory. Do you remember Jericho? Jericho. Okay. God told them Joshua chapter six. And for sake of time, I'm not going to read it to you. You know it. Joshua chapter six, God told Israel to walk around the walls of Jericho for seven days. And on the seventh day, they should walk seven times around the wall. And then on the seventh time, the priests were to blow the trumpets and then everybody was supposed to shout. Now that was the word shout to split the ears. Everybody was to shout a shout that would split the ears. And what was the effect? Those walls came down. That is a physical example of exactly what can happen in your life when you praise. Any walls that are in your way, any walls that are a problem to you, you give that shout of praise and you can see those walls come down. Amen? Amen. And then Jehoshaphat, in Second Chronicles chapter 20, and he was being surrounded by the men of Ammon and Moab and the men from Mount Seir. They were coming up against the people of Judah and Jerusalem and they were being surrounded and they were outnumbered. And so Jehoshaphat, King Jehoshaphat led all the people of Judah and Jerusalem to pray and fast. And then after they prayed and fasted, God spoke to them in second Chronicles 20 verse 15. God said, listen, King Jehoshaphat and all who live in Judah and Jerusalem. This is what the Lord says to you. Do not be afraid or discouraged because of this vast army for the battle is not yours, but God's verse 17. You will not have to fight this battle. Take up your positions and stand firm. Well, that's good. Go face the enemy and stand there, but don't fight. (laughs) see the deliverance the Lord will give you. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. Verses 22 and 23 say, then they appointed, actually they appointed singers and praisers to go out before them. And verse 22 and 23 says, as they began to sing and praise the Lord, the Lord set ambushes against the men of Ammon and Moab and Mount Seir, who were invading Judah and they were defeated. The men of Ammon and Moab rose up against the men of Seir to destroy and annihilate them. Then after they finished slaughtering the men from Seir, they destroyed one another. (laughs) So what happened was that they actually put the enemy into a state of confusion. So they turned on themselves and destroyed themselves. Well, have you ever thought about Where there is strife, there is confusion in every evil work. Well, Satan is the Lord of strife. I mean, that's not a term that's in the Bible, but he is the spirit of fear. He is the one who stirs up strife. And I've heard of someone who saw the Lord gave them sight into the spirit realm and Satan's kingdom and all of Satan's, the principalities and powers, they all hate each other. And they all fight against each other, except when they get united enough to fight against us. And then when they're not fighting against us, they're fighting against each other. And so there is already strife in Satan's camp. And so when you praise the Lord, then you are also putting confusion into the enemy's camp. And I'm remembering what we, what we've seen and heard about the Indian war cry and it would go, you know, Why would the Indians use that method? Because it strikes terror in the heart. They come charging in, making a loud noise, and it strikes terror. Anything that comes suddenly upon you loudly is a fearful thing. And that was one of the things that Gideon used. I mean, they all broke jars. Why? Because it made a loud noise. And so the noise is a weapon. And so the shout of joy and praise, we cannot see it in our natural physical world. But if our eyes could open to see the spirit realm, when we shout and praise and rejoice 
to the Lord, there is such a confusion that starts stirring among the demonic spirits. They just start getting into a buzz of confusion and they can't figure out what to do until they're defeated. Our praise penetrates through the spirits of darkness and reaches the throne of God. And, and it brings a chaos even and a confusion into the kingdom of darkness. It is a powerful spiritual weapon that we sometimes forget about it because we don't see it with our physical eyes. But if we saw with the spirit, we could see what an impact we are having just by saying, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And then you start giving one of those shouts. You can give a war cry and go, Woo, praise the Lord. Shout hallelujah. You know, and then that will start striking confusion and terror into the spirits of darkness. And it is a weapon that penetrates that realm and it tears down those strongholds or those forces that are against you. And that's why it says you have ordained praise to still the enemy, to still the enemy, to put an end to, to exterminate and to destroy the enemy in Psalm 8 two. And so that's Jericho. And then there's Jehoshaphat. And then let me remind you of Paul and Silas. What else do we see in Paul and Silas when they were in the jail at Philippi in Acts chapter 16, verses 23 to 26. Actually, I'll just read to you verse 25, Acts 16, 25 and 26. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God. And that word singing hymns is one of those Greek words that I gave you already. And the other prisoners were listening to them. And suddenly there was such a violent earthquake that the foundations of the prison were shaken. At once, all the prison doors flew open and everybody's chains came loose. Now, I want to show you this. The reason I'm showing you these things, these are visible manifestations of the result of praise. These same things happen, even if you don't see it, even if it's not visible, even if it's in the, what I mean, spirit realm, it'll still today cause chains to be broken. If there is any bondage, mental, emotional, spiritual, physical bondage, you can praise And the chains of bondage in your life can be broken off. Just like Paul and Silas chains were broken. And it shook the prison and the prison doors flew open. If there's any captivity in a person's life, they can praise their way out of that situation. And then I taught the series on the resurrection of Jesus, the death and resurrection. And I got to the part where when Jesus was in hell, in Psalm 22, verse 22, Psalm twenty-two, twenty-two, it says, I will, this is a prophetic Psalm about Jesus in hell. I will declare your name to my brothers in the congregation. I will praise you. And verse 25, Psalm twenty-two, twenty-five. from you comes the theme of my praise in the great assembly. When Jesus was in hell, He used praise to get out of hell. So if you feel like you're in a hell on earth situation, the same thing Jesus used to get out of hell, you can use. Because Psalm 22 is where the picture of his death on the cross and then his entering into hell and his coming out of hell. And it was praise in hell, lifting up his voice to God from the lowest pit, he lifted up his voice and that power. Why I'll get, I will share this, but in Psalm 22 verse three, God inhabits the praise of his people. So what is actually happening is that God's presence flooded hell to break the chains off of Jesus. The spirit of God went to break the power of Satan and the chains 
off of Jesus and set him free when he was in hell, when he praised. So God inhabits praise. Psalm 100 verse 4 says, we enter his gates with thanksgiving. We enter his courts with praise. Praise will bring you into the presence of God. But also when you praise, God comes into your presence. God inhabits the praise of his people. God inhabits our praises. So we enter into his presence, but then he also comes into our presence. He will come into our situation. He will come into our body. He will come into our spirit, our soul. He will come into our finances. When we praise, God inhabits our praises. And it brings the presence and the power of God into our situation, just like it did Jesus So as Jesus was in hell and he praised God and it brought him out, we can also praise God and it will bring us out of any situation. And because it brings God into that situation and it defeats the enemy in that situation and it brings us out. Hallelujah. It just defeats the enemy. And there's a prophetic word I read in this partner letter where God said, close yourself up and praise me. With the shout. This is a word from the Lord that God was giving. Close yourself up and praise me with the shout. And dance before me like David did. And the Lord says, I will take care of everything. The Lord said, I will take care of everything. Close yourself up. Praise me with the shout. Dance before me like David did. And I will take care of everything. So we see that praise brings the victory. Praise brings the victory in any situation. I also want you to see, and I'll let you turn to this one. I've not had you turning because I was just going fast, but go to Psalm 67. Praise brings the harvest. If you're believing for a harvest, praise brings the harvest. Psalm 67, Psalm 67 verses five and six. May the peoples praise you, O God. May all the peoples praise you. Then the land will yield its harvest. And God, our God, will bless us. Praise brings the harvest. So you're believing for a harvest. We're all believing for harvest. Praise him. Let all the people praise him. Then the land will yield its harvest and God, our God will bless us. So there we see praise brings the harvest. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And then last of all, praise brings joy and the joy of the Lord is our strength. So there is strength in praise. There is actually then healing for the body in praise. In Nehemiah 8.10, the joy of the Lord is your strength. Proverbs 17.22, a joyful heart is good medicine. And joy comes through praise because you enter his presence. You enter into his gates with thanksgiving. You enter into his courts with praise. And then in Psalm 16.11 Psalm 1611, in your presence is fullness of joy. In your presence is fullness of joy. So if you need the joy of the Lord, you need to enter into his presence. But the way you get in is through praise. You enter through praise. And also there's something about giving the shout. Many times you may start just by making a decision. Okay. I'm going to shout praise the Lord and you don't feel the joy, but if you just keep doing it and you dance and you say, praise the Lord, hallelujah, we've got the victory, you know, praising like you've got that big check or praising like you've got that thing you're believing for before you see it, but you start praising, it will produce joy. The joy comes as a fruit of the praise. And so you don't wait for joy No, you start praising and the joy will be the fruit of your praise. Hallelujah. 
And then that joy and that praise is strength. Well, actually, as we said in Psalm 8, 2, you have ordained praise, you have ordained strength. So it shows that praise was strength, but also the joy of the Lord is your strength. And so you enter into praise and you receive the joy of the Lord. The joy becomes your strength. And then that is one of the keys to standing and you keep standing and praising and standing and praising. And how can you keep standing? Because you keep praising. You can keep standing when you keep praising because the praising will be the strength that you need to keep standing. Now I wanted to show you just a few scriptures real quickly. Go to Habakkuk chapter three, Habakkuk chapter three. If you remember Obadiah, Jonah, Micah, Nahum, Habakkuk, it's after Nahum before Zephaniah chapter three, verses 17 and 18 and 19. Though the fig tree does not bud and there are no grapes on the vines, though the olive crop fails and the fields produce no food and there are no sheep in the pen and no cattle in the stalls, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will be joyful in God, my savior. The sovereign Lord is my strength and he makes my feet like the feet of a deer. We praise God no matter what the circumstances look like because we have the faith that those circumstances are changing. We have the faith that they're changing. So we praise God no matter what things look like. I mean, that's Paul and Silas in jail. They were praising God no matter what situation they were in because they knew the power of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so we just keep praising and praising and then you praise him. Okay. Some of the things I talked about how to praise and you celebrate Celebrate things. And what are you praising for? Praising God for things you're thankful for. Thank you, Lord, for my life. Thank you, Lord, for this day. Thank you for the blue sky. Thank you for the clouds. Thank you for the sunshine. Thank you for the birds that are singing. Thank you for running water. Thank you for electricity. Thank you for a bed to sleep in. You know, and I think of that so many oftentimes because of times of not having those things. And thank you, Lord. You can thank the Lord for your salvation. As it says in Isaiah 61, 10, I delight greatly in the Lord. My soul rejoices in God for, for he has clothed me in the garments of salvation. You praise him for his works. You praise him for his attributes. You praise him for his word. You praise him for who he is. Hallelujah. It's not hard to find things to praise him for if we are just willing to look. If you just focus on a problem and you don't see anything but the problem, you think, well, I can't think of anything to praise him for. Well, then you're just not looking around you because there's a lot to be thankful for and praising him for. And as we just live a life of praise, it will also produce for us victory after victory. It is a spiritual weapon that is powerful. Satan is afraid of it. It strikes terror, fear, and confusion into the kingdom of darkness, into the kingdom of darkness. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Well, let's all stand up. Hallelujah. Father, we just thank you and praise you for the revelation that you have given us, that we have power through praise. And Lord, I believe that there are some here and also those that will listen later that their key to their victory is praise. Praising will break them through into their victory, into their harvest. And Father, I thank you. We just give you all the praise. Father, you are so worthy. Lord, you are worthy. You are good. You are righteous. You are just. You are loving. You are merciful. You are compassionate. You are gracious. You are our God, our father. You are our healer, our provider. You are our strength, our banner, our victory. Hallelujah. Lord, you are our shepherd and our shelter. Lord, you have won for us the victory already. And Jesus, you are the lamb that was slain. And by your blood, you have purchased men for God from every tribe and tongue and kindred and people. And we praise you for your life and your love and your sacrifice and your blood. We thank you, Lord, for your word, which is eternal. We praise you, Lord, for your spirit, which you have baptized us with. We praise you. We praise you. We praise you, Father. We praise you for your promises. We praise you for the victory. We praise you for the ages and ages to come. 
in which we will reign and rule forever with you, that we will be able to enter into the exceeding glory. And Father, we praise you no matter what it looks like in life. We know it is but a moment. It is but a breath and it is working for us in eternal glory. And we thank you, Father. We just do give you all the praise and all the glory and all the honor. And Lord, we fill our hearts with praise. We fill our mouths with praise. Help each one to remember just to spend time each day praising you. And we will see such strength and such power and such victory as we use such a powerful weapon that you commanded the Israelites to do it regularly. And so we are also entering into this power of your spirit through praise. And we thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Giving you all the praise and glory and honor in Jesus name. And everyone said, amen. Amen.